Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be doing part two of our two-part series review on the SimLab GT1 Evo cockpit. So let's get to it. We are now ready to get this next level racing V3 motion platform mounted to our SimLab's GT1 Evo cockpit. Now, I, there's a lot of th things you got to consider when you're mounting something like this. It's a very heavy piece. You got to make sure it's supported properly. And not only that, but it's going to be moving and it's going to have a lot of torque on this piece of the frame here as it moves. And of course, that torque is going to translate into a, a reaction into the chassis of this unit. So we got to make sure that we bolt this thing down and have a good solid platform to mount it to. I'm not using the side pieces that come with it because I just can't use those brackets. It makes it too high and it's too wide and some other things. So we're just not going to use the brackets, although I wish I could because they are, they're pretty cool looking brackets. They got good graphics on it. But anyway, what, it is what it is and we just have to use it this way. And if you can see what I have here, twist, uh, turn this around here, where is I have four of these gusseted corner brackets, inside corner brackets that I'm going to be using to mount this with. Very strong brackets and I was able to take my ratchet over here and get these torqued down really well here. So yeah, these things are, are really, really tight, really solid, and I might snug them up again once I have the bolts down the bottom of the 8020. I don't know, we'll just have to see how that goes. You can see I've got some blue painter's tape on here where I've been test fitting this on the rig. And yeah, it's all the way down in the groove. You can see how much groove is sticking up here. See how much slot is on the top part because I'm trying to lower these brackets as much as possible, which of course in, in relation to this, it makes it sit a little bit lower, right? If I had it down further, then it would kick it up higher. I'm trying to keep this as low as possible in the rig itself. So when I mount my seat on here, I don't have some weird tall seat and I, and I can't get the steering wheel to adjust properly to get a, a decent ergonomic racing position. So again, there's a lot of consideration that goes into mounting this, or any seat for that matter, but especially this because, you know, you've got all these torque forces that are going to be twisting and moving around against the frame itself, and these are the points. I might actually put a third one in here. I don't know yet. After I get the seat on and I'm testing it, moving it, I'm going to be watching it very closely, and if there's any movement at all I can detect, then I'll go ahead and put a third bracket in there. Not a big deal. Just put another one in there and attach it to the frame. But I got a feeling this is like rock solid. I mean, there's no way this is not budging at all. They have some really nice solid mounting points here. So I think this is going to do it. So I'm going to take this painter's tape off and I'm going to be using these. These are some spacers that I have. Spacer material, if you will. They come in these long looking fork things and you can snap them off and I've actually trimmed these down to size so these will actually sit like this underneath and then I'll have the bolt down in the middle there or they can sit like this however you want to do it really it's not that important which way it goes but I've actually trimmed them down so they won't be sticking out past the bracket once it's sitting on top of the profiles right so that's about it as far as what I've come up with and how I'm going to be installing this so now we got to do is take this heavy piece of kit, <laughs> 55 pounds of it, and very gently and carefully place it on these pieces that I already know where, the, where it's going to be sitting so I can put these pieces down and then sit it on top after I take this painter's tape off. And then we'll be securing it with the regular galvanized socket head cap bolts, and these are M8s. And I believe these are like 15 mil long, which is just enough to go through there and then get the nut that's already sitting in the profile. But you'll see that once I go over there and place this where it needs to be. So we'll get to that next. All right, we've got the platform securely mounted to our SimLabs GT1 Evo rig. And it looks like these two corner brackets on each side are gonna do the job. At least that's what it looks like so far. And it's very, very tight. I can't get any movement at all out of it. So I think that is exactly what the doctor ordered right here. And we'll walk around the back side. And you really can't tell from this shot, but there's plenty of room underneath so that the fans can get plenty of air to cool the servo motors that are running everything. Walk around here, see the other brackets. And the seat is just sitting on top of the platform. I do not have that bolted in yet, so 
but I can't help myself. I got to try to see how this thing looks as far as the ergonomics because I was really concerned about the height of this unit mounted to this cockpit. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk over and put this one up and walk over to the rig and very carefully get in this seat and try not to make anything go crazy. Let me pull my little radio out here. Make sure that's not stuck on anything. My wire's going everywhere. That's great. There we go. Okay, now we're ready. All right, so very gently. There we go. Okay. Nothing went flying, so that's great. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, this is actually exceeding my expectations. I think I've got this. This seat is definitely low enough to where I'll be able to. In fact, I might even have to lower this this down, I'm thinking. Yeah, this platform for the wheelbase here, which is a very stiff unit in its own right, is going to have to be lowered a little bit for the ergonomics to be right. But yeah, I'm real happy the way this is this is lining up now, so this is great. Now all we got to do is get the rest of the hardware on the cockpit and see how everything works together. So we'll get to that segment next. I got the seat bolted up to the NLR V3 motion platform now that obviously is sitting on our GT1 Evo cockpit and it was a bit of a little bit of fiddling to get this to fit right but I'm pretty happy with it because I didn't have to actually fabricate some aluminum bars or plates or anything to make things reach because typically that's the kind of thing you might have to do with a seat when you mount it to whatever platform you're mounting it to. Anyway, you can see I got the bolts in here, and you can see I got some washers spacing out the rear here. And I have the same thing over on the other side, not quite as visible. And this was to allow the side mount brackets to be spaced outward so I could actually access the holes that are pre cut into the platform. So, yeah, again, happy I didn't have to break out the saws and, and drills and everything and start doing a bunch of, of different work. But, yeah, this went on easier than I thought it would. Nice and secure now, and it's a good angle, the, typically the angle that I'm going to be racing at. And yeah, so this is good. Now we can get on to mounting the wheel shifter and pedals, and we'll do that next. I've got the pedals mounted now, and I'm using the always beautiful HPP PRXSEs, and they're on my 10 series 8020 profile. And I was able to get, I left the heel plate off of this so I, you guys could see this. I was actually to get six different mounting points. I got one here and two across the front there. One you can see in both of them there, one all the way at the end down there. So that gives me two across the front bar. I got one here on the side bar, and I've also got another one. Let me see I'll fly over here. There we go. On the middle part of this frame. And then I was able to get one on the back part and one more in between those guys there we go so that gives me a total of six l brackets securing this to the plate and i was fortunate enough with the plate that the holes lined up to where i was able to make that happen and of course being able to slide them around back and forth on the 8020 profile to begin with is yeah gave me an advantage as far as getting the holes where i needed them to be or getting the brackets where i needed the bolt be because the holes were already there but yeah, this is another advantage of taking some 8020 series and mounting your pedal sets to them because you can, of course, you probably don't change them around as much, anywhere near as much as I do here at the SRG, but still, you're able to easily attach them to things. So there we go, six of those, and it's pretty sturdy. Actually, I'm going to cut away here, and I'm going to show you a shot of me using the pedals when I'm actually got the heel plate back on. And you can see doing the heel and toe and stuff like that. There's just no flex in this that I can see or I can feel any. The video might show just a little bit somewhere. But yeah, very, very solid mount. Very solid. So yeah, I'm real happy the way this has turned out too. Of course, we won't know for sure until we're driving it. But yeah, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a very, very nice setup to run on this cockpit. Go down here and look at them from the front. And those two big L brackets you see on the front of this profile, I put those under the heel plate so that, unfortunately, the HPP, this 
PRX pedal set, these brackets here that hold, you see those four holes or two holes in each one of those brackets, that's what holds our heel plate. But unfortunately, there's only one bolt on each side holding it to the frame of the brake pedal. You can see it there and there. So the problem is it actually moves. It'll, it'll bend down when I put a lot of pressure on it. So that's why you see these other brackets here. If they're underneath the heel plate, which is the perfect height, by the way, then the heel plate cannot move down. Just something I've discovered over the years of using these pedals and easy enough to remedy it. Right, so yeah, I'm happy with this. I guess what we'll do next is get on to mounting a direct drive wheelbase onto our wheelbase mount. So we'll see how that goes. Originally, I was planning to mount a, a midge, a small midge OSW motor here for my direct drive test. And I'm putting the bracket up here just so you guys can see the problem. There are no holes that match this bracket, which is the, the typical bracket you get with an OSW kit. It has these two side pieces that have a, an adjustable section in it. There is. And it doesn't matter if I mount this on the inside or the outside. If I hit on the inside like this, let's go ahead and put this one here. I don't have, I've got two holes. I could almost mount it like this, but it's still not lining up on the other side. So, yeah, and it's not in the middle either. So it's just, I don't have anything that I can mount this to. If I mounted it to the outside, which is typically how these are mounted, then I still don't have enough holes here to do anything with. I don't know how well that's showing up on the video, but there's no holes. Now, I could drill some holes in here, but I was trying to avoid that, and I always avoid that if I can get away with it. And so, yeah, this is not going to work. But the good news is SimLabs actually has a bracket that they manufacture for the, OS, for the midge motors, and it has the front piece you see here with the four holes in it. So we mount the servo motor, still mount the servo motor to the front of the plate. But you can see on the bottom, it actually, and I'm not sure if that's bent or welded to the original plate, but anyway, on the bottom, it's drilled out for a three-hole pattern that matches the Fanatics. So, yeah, we can still mount it, or mount the midge to the front of that because it's got the right pattern, but then we'll have a Fanatic pattern on the bottom of that plate. So it would be like the center one here on this plate, and the two back ones on these two close holes here, It'll be the back ones there, I'm assuming. I'm pretty sure that's the, the correct spacing. So that would work. But unfortunately, I don't have one of those brackets. But we can still put some di direct drive greatness on this rig and drive it and give it a little bit of a thrashing because we do have this, which is the AccuForce V2. Okay? And it has some holes on the bottom for mounting. You can see them there. Got two down here and two up here. And we just happen to have a hole here, this small hole back in here and here in the front oblong hole in front of the, that hole on both sides will actually fit the pattern on this V2 housing. So let me set that down on there gently. And this deck is loose, so if you see it moving, that's the deal. It's not like it's tightened down and still has that much flex in it. It would be a very good deck if it did have that much flex. And I'm looking down the top here. And that's how it will sit. So now we can get our V2 AccuForce on here. And this does a max or peak of 16 newton meters according to some experience. So this should be ample, I think, forces that we can put on this front section here, including the bar back here, this crossbar, and see what this rig is made of as far as being able to handle the higher force feedback forces available in the direct drive wheels. Now, of course, it's not a 54G Cola Morgan or a large midge which puts out 30 newton meters but i think we can pretty much get a good idea of what it's capable of running this sim experience v2 motor so that's what we're going to do when we come back we'll have it bolted on and see what it looks like now we're ready to mount our shifter and i'm going to use the one of my favorite sequential shifters the aologs shifter and get a closer look at that i actually have done a review on this if you guys have been following along you know that right and I've already got this plate attached to the bottom of it. It comes with the adjustable plate here that we can put on this to attach it to 8020 profile or whatever you want to as long as you drill the hole patterns like this, you can attach it. And you can put this plate on the side also. But we're going to be using it this way. Very simple to put this on. I'm going to be using, obviously, some roll-in T-nuts with a spring ball. 
and a couple of six mil looks like galvanized screws if I can hold on to them long enough so pretty simple installation and yeah we'll go ahead and get this bolted up and when we come back we'll just take a look at the whole setup with everything attached to it and see how it all came together so now we have the final configuration of the rig and I want to talk a little bit about the ergonomics and the observa any other observations rather that I had and yeah it's a very comfortable sitting position for me now I pretty much got it dialed in where I want to, to as far as ergonomics and for the comfort on long stints and things like that. I actually test drove it once just to get a feel for everything. I might push the pedals back just a little bit more. But other than that, yeah, this is, uh, I was able to get a really good comfortable position here. And I was a little concerned about that, the height that I'm, I'm in this cockpit because of this Next Level Racing V3 motion platform really lifts up where the original seating position is. So again, that just gives credit to this Evo cockpit that it has enough adjustability to accommodate something like this. So the wheel is in a good position for me. My wrist, the joint of my wrist are level with the top of the rim where it is typically, which is comfortable for me. Everybody's a little different. So just because, you know, one person does it one way doesn't mean it's going to be comfortable for you that way too. So you need to try different things. When I grab the wheel and I'm actually turning and racing it, the Knuckles on my thumb here are in line with the bone on my shoulder, pretty much, and that's kind of where I like it also. So I've got plenty of room for spinning this wheel around as needed. And yeah, the pedal level is good. We can actually still come up another, I would say, four inches in height if I wanted to. So if you didn't have this, this motion platform in here and you were sitting lower in the chassis, you could get close to a straight on I wouldn't call it a formula position because, you know, you, the legs are actually higher than the, or your knees are like in here in your stomach, but you could definitely get a, a, a much more laid back position if you wanted to. Now, one thing uh, about this is that, first off, we're using the, obviously, the AccuForce version 2 wheel set up here, and that pushes the wheel really out far from this crossbar. So... Yeah, if you had something else on here, if I had an OSW mount on here that you saw in the other segment, if you watched that, then that would be straight up here, and then I would have the shaft sticking out. I don't think the wheel would be this far towards me anymore. I think it would be further back, but it's hard to tell because I don't have the bracket. But this, this, this thing is just so long, and it's got a, you know, the hub sticks out probably the same amount it does on the OSW, but the OSW front plate would probably sit back to here somewhere. So that would give you another, I don't know, inch or two of space going that way. And when, the, when you got the wheel this far out from where the connections are for the chassis here for your wheel support, then yeah, it, it's going to give you more leverage when you're pushing up in the wheel, when you're driving typically. And I use the style of driving where when I turn, I'm actually pushing with this arm that's turning, right? So get more leverage and use more muscles in your body to turn the wheel. So the, a shorter wheelbase obviously, or, or a smaller motor is what I wanna say, would set this back another couple of inches. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because you're gonna get more leverage on this. I can actually move this up and down if I really put a lot of pressure on it, I could see it moving. And of course, having that much leverage on it, I'm not surprised. Now, another thing is the reach for the shifter. Because I'm pushed back on the steering wheel here, and if I had a deep dish wheel, it'd be even further back, and I'd have, probably have to find some more holes in the seat here and move it back on this motion platform. But we'll go to this other cut view on the shifter view over here. And you can see that the shifter is actually all the way back to the end of this bar. And that puts it in an, actually a pretty good position for shifting. I'm comfortable with that. I got no problem reaching it. So yeah, it's, it's really in a pretty good position. But because it's so far out on this arm, then that's giving us a lot of leverage when we're shifting. And you can actually see it transferring through the chassis. And it, you can actually see this, the wheel is actually shaking. I don't know how well it's showing up, but you can see it going up and down. So, and of course the reason is we don't have a bottom support bar here that goes straight up and down here, which I would think, I, if I was, this was my rig, I would put a bar in there. That's not the way it comes. 
but you could probably, when you order this cockpit from SimLab, you could probably request an extra piece that could be used for that. And maybe even, because this is a very narrow cockpit, the bolsters, the side bolsters of this Sparco seat, and this is not a wide seat, it's pretty, it's pretty thin, because it fits me and I'm very thin. But these bolsters, I can see if I'm moving this bar back, or eventually it's gonna bump into this bolster. So I would also take this off of, from mounting it at this point, and I would just mount it flat up against this upright and just use uh, maybe two on each side of this to hold it and then have it coming out. And that would kick it out far enough that it would go right past this seat. And I could come all the way back here if I wanted to, somewhere back here. And then, of course, I would have to have another piece of profile coming up here to catch the bottom of it. And that would give you a very, very solid shifting platform. But again, this is, for the price point this cockpit comes in, you know, there's going to be some compromises, no doubt. And depending on the gear you use, if I had a Logitech wheel on this and yeah, it was sitting right up here, then I would be way more forward. And then this would actually be, I would be maybe up to here, probably on the shifter, I would imagine somewhere up here. So I would be another four or five inches forward. But that's the way these things go when you build these rigs. There's no, you know, one way to do this. So yeah, I'm just thinking out loud here what I would change if I wanted to or needed to. And really, when I'm actually driving this and I'm shifting it, am I really going to feel that, you know, yeah, I might feel it, but I'm probably not going to notice it with the force feedback in the wheel and this motion platform moving at the same time. Yeah, that's going to be the least thing that I feel, I believe. Anyway, I'm real happy with the way this came out. It's really, for, like I said, for the price point, this is really a solid, solid rig. Now, the only reason we see movement in it is because of the, the way I had to set this up. Like I said, if I had a Logitech or a Thrustmaster on here or something like that, I would be way, I would be definitely four or five inches more forward of the whole unit. And that would change the way the leverage is on the shifter. It would be further forward and it wouldn't be shaking the wheel like it, like it is now. But the overall driving experience and the little bit of that I've done so far is really good. But I'm going to shoot another, uh, we're going to actually shoot some footage of me driving it. And of course, I'll be testing this motion rig at the same time. So yeah. We're going to get to the driving section next and just see how it operates under normal driving conditions or race conditions. So here we are at, let's see, this is race room at Laguna Seca. And not a whole lot I can show you in a video of me driving in sitting in a cockpit. It really, it's hard to convey the feel you get, but it is a very solid cockpit. SimLab, I think, has a winner on their hands, especially at this price point. It's easy to get into the 80-20 cockpit rig game. And then, of course, you can expand to your heart's content because you have this base anyway. And actually, the fact that I was able to get this Next Level Racing V3 platform mounted to this rig and it to be solidly mounted is a testament in itself, I think, of just how well everything goes together in this kit you know it's got good hardware and of course 80 20 profiles will always do the job as long as you don't cheap out on the hardware where your fasteners are and SimLab certainly gives you the top quality stuff for that so what else can we say about it at the price range i think it's 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 a winner again for SimLab here only complaint i really have is the shifter arm that comes off the wheel motor support it needs a support going down to make it a little bit more rigid if the seating position is going to be back and you're going to have a shifter at the very end like I do. When I, you don't see me doing it here, but when I was hammering on it, I could actually feel the vibration in the steering wheel rim itself like you could see in the previous segment of the video on this review. And yeah, I would put some at least a down bar. But then again, for the price point, I think it's, it's sufficient. And it's easy again, 80-20, to do whatever you want to just buy a couple of pieces and some more brackets and yeah, you can do anything you want to to these rigs. That's the beauty of them. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Really not much else to see here. And what we'll do next is just go ahead and get into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the SimLab GT1 Evo cockpit. This is the third 8020 profile kit I've received from the guys at SimLab. And I'm happy to say this kit lives up to the level of quality I have come to expect with the added bonus of an improved packaging process they are now using. It does seem to deliver the profiles with minimal drama to the finish. The GT1 Evo is what I would call their entry-level cockpit. 
I have the black anodized version that comes in at 412 euros, and there's a gray version that is a bit less at 329 euro. Even at this low price, you can still get a very well-designed solid 8020 cockpit. As usual, all the needed hardware is included with the kit with no missing pieces. In fact, I actually had some brackets and fasteners left over after the build was complete. Speaking of the hardware, they're all top flight bits, including gusseted corner brackets with anti-rotation tabs, and the custom designed wheelbase mount and pedal tray gives you plenty of hole patterns for maximum mounting options. <laughs> this is one of the few times I've been able to mount all my hardware to a cockpit without fabricating a bracket or drilling some holes. After the build was complete, I was left with a very stiff cockpit frame, with the pedal tray having the type of solid feel usually only found on larger frames. The wheel base mounting solution is also very solid, but you will see some flex with the heavier direct drive motors mounted to it. But we have to maintain a proper perspective here, especially considering the price point. I would like to see the shifter mount assembly add an upright profile to tame the flex you can get when your seating position is pushed back by the longer wheelbases out there. And also a wheelbase upright side mount option to accommodate wider seats that some users may need. Other than that, and when considering the entry level price, this is a cockpit that deserves a look if you are in the market for one. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support what we do here at the SRG, visit our website at simracinggarage.com.